Hey, hey, math people. So recently, I just gave my juniors a nice full week of factoring. And we did we did every factoring under the sun, man. We did difference of cubes, difference of squares, different higher powers, grouping. We did it all. And by the end of the week, we had problems that had factoring and factoring and factoring, kind of like a factoring inception kind of mix there. And it just brought it to the next level. And on our last day, a lot of students were uh, they, they kind of stopped factoring within the first like 10 minutes of class or so, presumably because they were having so much fun, they just couldn't contain themselves. One student was crying in the corner, and I know what she was thinking. She was just thinking, I, I just don't want this review to ever end. So if you couldn't pick up on the sarcasm there, it was pretty much the exact opposite experience of that. So I, I really do understand that factoring the first time around can be a pretty overwhelming experience, especially when you're thrown all of these tactics at you and it's really not immediately clear without practice which tactic to apply um, right away. So one part of me understands how overwhelming factoring can be for the first time. Another part of me wants to drag these kids across the factoring finish line. And the third part of me feels nothing because math teachers feel no emotion. Jokes and feelings aside, I was inspired to uh, propose a, a factoring challenge because of all this factoring I've done this week. And this factoring challenge is a doozy. So I figure that I'm putting my students through all this factoring pain. Why don't I go through a little bit myself? So this problem right here is mathematically equivalent to that one friend we all have uh, that is this simple, cute, innocent person on the surface. But once you really get to know them, deep down, they are just this feisty diva. They're the type of people that yell at customer service over the phone, lay on the horn every chance they can on the road, and ultimately just that type of person that you don't want to mess with. Uh, so that person's mathematical representation is right here. Uh, so I do want to factor this out, but let's just take a, a 10 second uh, recap on uh, two factoring methods that we will definitely need to use here. These are the factoring methods we're going to really employ in that expression that we were provided. So a difference of two squares and sum and difference of cubes. So very briefly, if we have the difference of two perfect squares, you can write it as such. And here if you had both the sum and difference of two perfect cubes, you can write it as such. It is time. All right, before I get going on this problem, I suggest you pause the video now and attempt factoring this on your own. Uh, three, two, one, my time. So the very first thing I notice is that we have a difference here and that these two powers are even, aka divisible by two. I like looking for opportunities to employ difference of two squares, so that's the very first thing I did. The square root of x to the 24th is just taking this 24, dividing it by two. Uh, and same thing with this y to the 24th, divide that by two. Uh, so here we have um, the difference of these two perfect squares is x to the 12th plus y to the 12th multiplied by x to the 12th minus y to the 12th. First step I chose to do was difference of two squares. So next step, I notice I now have two factors, two different expressions. I got to keep going. It's not that easy. Uh, here I notice the sum of two uh, numbers. And if we notice both of these expressions have a power of 12, which is divisible by 3, this is sum of two cubes right here. So I went ahead and factored that. Uh, this ex the second expression is the difference of two numbers again. I'm going to look for a difference of two squares. Um, are they even? They are. Uh, so again, I, I factored once more with difference of two squares. So here I did, um, for this first expression, sum of two cubes. And for this second expression, I did difference of two squares. Uh, so just in case you were a little low uh, on your difference in sum of cubes and squares and all those things in your life, uh, this problem's got a lot of it. All right, let's keep going. First and second factor are done. Third and fourth are not. Here I see uh, the power is six this time around. Technically, this is again a, a situation where it's difference of two squares and difference of two cubes. I chose to use difference of two squares. And then the second factor here, it's the sum of two squares and two cubes. Since there's no such thing as the sum of two uh, squares, that is a, a factoring technique, I use the uh, sum of two cubes there. And uh, we can keep going again. And at last, we finally arrive at our answer here. Uh, so <laughs> first and second factor were already done. Uh, you, I'm like being pushed off the side of the screen here, as you can tell, I had to bring this close. 
Uh, third and fourth, these are classic cases of sum and, and, and now difference of cubes respectively. So this factor uh, is factored as the following, and this factor is factored as the following. The fifth and sixth factor in this expression were already done. Uh, there's nothing more you can do in either of those, so those just plop down as well, uh, leaving us at a grand total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, unique factors of um, this initial expression, x to the 24th minus y to the 24th. And it's very easy to uh, drop a negative somewhere. As you can see, I don't know how many signs are here in, in total. I'm certainly not counting. Uh, that's all I have for you guys. I'm going to ask you to continue to math on. I'll do the same. See you in the next video.